this is Corey Shore, the Kenwick School District GLAD coach, and today I'm going to share GLAD tip number two with you, using GLAD for social emotional learning. Last week in the video, I explained how the extended name tag was a way to begin to get to know our students and create a positive classroom culture where students feel safe, can share information and content about themselves and with each other, and practice being active listeners. This week, we're going to take a peek at the low prep strategy, the interactive journal, as yet another way for us to become more familiar with our students' deep culture. First, let's talk about what deep culture is. According to Hall's cultural iceberg model, when we look at a person, we only see about one-tenth of who that person is. Just like when we look at an iceberg, we only see one-tenth or the tip of the iceberg. That other nine-tenths is out of sight. This one-tenth here may be on a person, clothing, food, language, their skin color, what their hair looks like, but we need to get to know the other nine-tenths of our students, their beliefs, values, principles, experiences, and personal stories. If we do not try to get to know our students' deep culture, a culture of silence in the classroom could be developed because we may accidentally offend or say something that goes against the cultural beliefs of other students. We need to be deliberate in uncovering values and beliefs of our students. So how can we do this? How do we get to know the deep culture of our students? In GLAD, we use the interactive journal. These are a couple pictures of the traditional paper journal, which we have always used in face-to-face -face instruction. Simply stack a few pieces of blank copy paper together and staple it together with a cover page titled interactive journal on top. The first day, you simply ask your students to write you a letter. On this example here, You'll notice that the teacher and the student went back and forth using the friendly letter format with a salutation and a closing. The student and the teacher both use sketches. If there are mistakes in the student's writing, for example, down here, you'll notice the student was trying to spell favorite and misspelled it. Instead of correcting the student's language, the teacher modeled the correct way to spell favorite here. One important point to remember is that this type of writing is not to be graded. It is simply to get to know our students better. If there are mistakes, the teacher simply models the correct use. The traditional paper version is usually used for face-to-face -face instruction, but currently could also be sent home as part of your packet if you are doing that. It's important to remember that sketches are okay. Using sketches is one more way for us to get to know our students and their talents. Sometimes our limited English speakers or struggling writers can express their thoughts and feelings better with art. It still gives us a glimpse into our students' talents, likes, dislikes, and beliefs. As their confidence and skills grow throughout the year, and you as the teacher, continue modeling, sharing information with words, students will eventually begin to write once they have figured out that all of their efforts are valid. Using sentence frames or asking questions in a multiple choice or true, force, true false format about the student is also another fun way to create a safe environment for kiddos and get them to communicate. So in a face-to-face -face situation, here are a few different ways that teachers have integrated the interactive journal. As I mentioned before, simply using blank computer paper stapled with a cover page, composition notebooks, either of the above, but cut in half so that the teacher's stack is a little bit lighter, using electronic versions, or some teachers even print emojis or sentence frames for younger kiddos instead of using blank computer paper. In a virtual setting, you still could send paper packets home if that is an option your school is providing. Last spring, we had some teachers begin interactive journals 
using Google Docs as an individual ongoing assignment that was assigned in Google Classroom. Another idea that piggybacks on this one is to use Google Slides assigned as a Google assignment individually, but each slide could be a different journal entry to provide a better organized interactive journal. Sketches may not be as easy to do in Google, but students could always provide images or GIFs. We also had one teacher using Flipgrid in order to get oral responses from her students. This was a great way for her struggling writers to still share their thoughts and feelings and respond to the teacher's prompts. In the hybrid model, you could go with any of these options. Just consider which method would work best for you and your students to help provide consistency. One question we always get in trainings is how do I manage the interactive journals? There are lots of ideas. Some teachers respond to just a quarter of the class each week, and other times they respond to one team each week. In GLAD, we promote sitting your students in teams or even in a Zoom environment. Some teachers have divided their students up into groups, even though they're not physical groups, and they will respond to one team each week rather than the entire class. This is an example of a K2 interactive journal. You'll notice that all the student wrote was the teacher's name and then also did a sketch with crayons. Even though this was all the student provided, the teacher still modeled a friendly letter format, asked a question prompt, and then signed it with a closing. Even modeling the correct uh, letter format and the words is going to help our K2 students become better writers. You can also write to all students in one month's time. Divide them however you see fit. Just be sure to set a reasonable pace for yourself. One other idea we've gotten from teachers is that once a routine of the interactive journal has been established and you've written to all of your students a few times, then you could introduce the teacher mailbox. In this case, the teacher would instruct the students that when they do feel the need to write to a teacher with a question or a situation they need help with, they could do that in their interactive journal and put it in the mailbox. Or alternatively, if the teacher is noticing that a student is becoming troubled in some way, this can be a non-threatening way for the teacher to invite the student to let them know how things are going. So just to review, the rationale on the interactive journal provides authentic dialogue and modeled writing between the teacher and student and helps strengthen that teacher-student relationship so we're able to get to know the deeper culture of our students. The strategic design is simple. For packets, you just staple together five to seven blank unlined papers. You could use a Google Doc or Google Slides as an individual assignment electronically or use Flipgrid for oral responses. The delivery, first thing, you give an unprompted writing choice. Always use friendly letter format and remember that students can always sketch or write as they feel more comfortable. And remember the teacher should always ask questions. This gives students a chance to write back and answer those questions. If there are mistakes, make sure as the teacher, you are modeling and underlining the correct grammar and spelling. So thank you for listening and finding out about how you can help build social emotional learning with your students with a GLAD strategy. Go ahead and visit and like our Facebook page, KSD GLAD. And if you have any questions or need support, feel free to email me. Thank you.